We've got Intel 10th Gen, RTX 3000, AMD Ryzen 4000. There's a whole bunch of new hardware releases as well as announcements coming down the pipe. And it comes as no surprise that there's a bunch of PC builders that just are really hesitant to pull the trigger when it comes to buying a brand new gaming PC. But guys, I've got an alternative. Let's take that old clunker we've got underneath our desk and make that our brand new gaming PC. Today, we're gonna to be comparing a virtual desktop hardware against some of the more modern PCs we've looked at on the channel, and we're gonna determine which one has the more horsepower and ultimately, which one provides the more value. So instead of talking virtual, let's go touch some hardware. How's it going, guys? Hope you're having a great day. Gaming PCs come in a whole bunch of different shapes and budgets. We've got our Frankenstein PCs that I'm well known for, but then you've got the holy shit PCs that you would post to the Battlestation subreddit. And this is not going to be your typical hardware review. Today we're going to look at a virtual desktop that's provided by our friends over at Shadow, and we're going to compare its hardware and its performance directly against a couple different budget tiers when it comes to gaming PCs. If you're not familiar with Shadow, it's a virtual desktop experience, and they've got data centers all, all spread across the U.S. as well as a few over in Europe, and it provides a pretty decent amount of hardware to its users on a subscription basis. Uh, as they start to ramp up their hardware assets, they are breaking up a bunch of different tiers, and today we're going to be looking at the Shadow Boost tier. It's their entry level, but it actually has some pretty good hardware. From a CPU perspective, they're going to be giving you four cores or eight threads based out of a Intel Xenon E5-2678. I think that sounds about right. I'll put it down here in the bottom. Uh, but it's going to be four cores, eight threads, base clock speed of 2.5 gigahertz, and it boosts to about 3.1 or 3.5 gigahertz. I haven't found really solid information on it, but in practice we got 3.1. So it's a pretty decent processor, but it's just not as fast as some of the more modern processors we see in the market these days. The GPU powering this virtual desktop is going to be the Quadro P5000. It's marketed as a GTX 1080, and it's going to be handling both the monitor output as well as the streaming and coding that's coming to you over the internet. And, you know, it sounds good on paper. It's got pretty much similar specs as the GTX 1080, but in practice, it's behaving more like a GTX 1070 Ti. I know we're kind of nitpicking there, but you'll see the data later in the video about why we think, you know, it might be a little optimistic to call it a GTX 1080. And unfortunately, since this is a server-based product and we live in a virtualized environment, we don't get much more detail when it comes to uh, other components of the system. I do know we have 12 gigs of RAM allocated to us on our desktop, which I do believe might be DDR4-2400. I'm still waiting to hear back from the Shadow service about that. And then, of course, we're getting 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. Again, that's a little small for today's standards. You know, there's some games that require hundreds of gigabytes for downloads. So, uh, but overall, this is a pretty solid stack up of hardware. And let's see what kind of hardware we're going to be comparing it against on our local machine. If you didn't catch our budget PC build, I put the link up here in the card. Our lowest end gaming PC is going to be our Ryzen 1600X RX 580 build. It costs right around 600 bucks. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, which is a little more than what we've got with the Shadow Service, but it's gonna be a pretty decent entry-level computer for anyone that's gonna be getting into gaming. And on the top end, we're gonna be putting in a Ryzen 3600 as well as the GTX 1080, so we can get an apples-to-apples -apples comparison against the Shadow's P5000. Again, today's comparison is gonna be strictly comparing the Shadow hardware against these local gaming PCs hardware. If you're wanting a look at the gameplay that Shadow provides, click up here in the top right to see the video I did about the gaming comparison. Pretty in-depth. I rank all the games. It's definitely worth a look. Today, we've got a couple different games and as well as a couple different benchmarks to kind of gauge the performance of all these PCs. We've got a couple different CPU-bound gaming benchmarks as well as two GPU hungry AAA titles. These are all going to be automated benchmarks to help ease the data collection part process. With that out of the way, let's go take a look at the results. Starting us off today is going to be Grand Theft Auto 5, and clearly we see that as the Ryzen 3600 and GTX 1080 are almost about to double the average frame rate compared to our other two systems. And interesting enough, the budget system, the 1600X and RX 580 down there at the bottom, 
it nearly matches our shadow-based environment. Bumping up the resolution, however, does shine in favor of the shadow platform where the P5000 does get to flex its muscles quite a bit, but it still is not able to hit that GTX 1080 marketed performance that we've all heard about. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is going to be our first graphically demanding title, and at 1080p and highest settings, the Ryzen 3600 and GTX 1080 still are leading the pack, but fortunately for Shadow, the Quadro P5000 is able to flex its muscles a little bit more, scoring above 60 frames per second across the board at this resolution. Our $600 budget PC barely skates by. But if you're wanting to decrease the settings down to high, all platforms today perform above 60 frames per second. And again, the GTX 1080 still leading the pack with the P5000 with Shadow closely behind. Rainbow Six Siege is gonna be our other CPU dependent game today, but unfortunately the benchmark runs just so fast we weren't able to get a gameplay comparison there. So you're just gonna to have to live with the charts for now, but it's a very easy game to play and all three platforms play it well. And we see the trend that the local GTX 1080 Ryzen 3600 is clearly the winner at both resolutions. The P5000 with the Xenon processor actually runs pretty well we're able to score above 120 frames per second even at the 1440p resolution. You know, it's a pretty solid game all around. Uh, we might even need to find a different workload, so if y'all have any suggestions, let us know in the comments. We can revisit that in a future video. Rockstar Games Red Dead Redemption 2 is gonna be our GPU powerhouse benchmark, and fortunately enough for the Shadow platform, the Quadro P5000 is able to keep pace with the GTX 1080 on our gaming rig, and that's mainly because this game is just that heavy of a workload for the GPU, the CPU doesn't really impact its results. We did test 1080p and a couple different quality presets in order to verify that we weren't missing anything. We do recommend only playing at uh, 1080p with the balanced preset, if you're feeling crazy, go ahead and try out 1440p. It's not gonna look as good because the frame rates don't really meet that 60 frames per second. But if you're gonna be getting the Shadow Ultimate or Shadow Infinite, it's definitely worth consideration on installing. Granted, it is a really large download. With the games out of the way, let's talk about some synthetic benchmarks. 3D Mark Firestrike is our gameplay comparison today, and it is pretty clear that the Shadow platform is just providing a very choppy experience, so I don't recommend running this benchmark and enjoying it in your free time. We do observe the CPU deltas going forward. The newer Ryzen processors are clearly outpacing the Xenon processor. The saving grace here, though, is the P5000 does maintain the trends we saw in some of the gameplay earlier. And then once we kick it up into Time Spy, we again see that the graphics score does follow similar trends and the CPU scores do tighten up quite a bit, but unfortunately Shadow just is not able to perform when it comes compared to the more expensive gaming PC. Cinebench R20 is a favorite benchmark of mine. We run it all the time over at Tom's Hardware. And what's interesting here is the Ryzen 5 3600 is almost twice as fast as the Xenon processor that's provided with Shadow. And that is just crazy how far the architectures have come since 2014. Um, just a word of advice, if you're gonna be doing encoding and stuff on your Shadow platform, make sure you're wiggling your mouse quite a bit. Sometimes uh, the timers go off. So given these results, I don't expect renders to complete rather quickly. But if you, need the, if you need the horsepower to do it, it is there and I would use it because you're paying for it, right? PC Mark 10 is gonna wrap us up with the synthetics and it's gonna cover programs like essential programs, digital media creation like GIMP or Adobe Photoshop. And then it's also gonna cover productivity such as Microsoft PowerPoint, those types of tasks. And unfortunately for Shadow, the Xenon processor is not able to really perform as well as we would hope. 
it is scoring in last place except for gaming and all the different workloads. It's not the best option, but if you're gonna be getting shadow and you're wanting to work remotely instead of on like your cell phone or on your like ancient laptop, you know, it's, it's there, it's usable, and I just wouldn't be expecting it to be a rendering workhorse if you're gonna be looking for production work. Now that we've got the data as well as the visual comparisons, let's start to draw some conclusions. It shouldn't come as a surprise, but the CPU is definitely the weakest link on the Shadow service. The 2.5 gigahertz processor is just not gonna cut it when it comes to modern gameplay, and it's really holding back that Quadro P5000. To add salt to the wound, the Haswell E architecture from 2014, it's definitely starving our memory bandwidth, and that's gonna impact games such as F1 2018 or even Metro Exodus. So let's also talk about the storage solution. It's not really a performance complaint, but 256 gigabytes really is a small storage when it comes to modern game titles, as well as you know video editing or all that stuff. So if you are gonna be signing up for the Shadow Boost service, definitely hook up that extra storage option to get that 512 gigabytes. But Shadow does account for these deficiencies with a killer value proposition. Uh, for just the cost of a few Twitch subscriptions a month, you get access to a pretty solid 1080p 60 frames per second gameplay experience. And if I was building a PC, I would save some money, you know, maybe 60 bucks a month and increase that to 75. That way, that extra 15 bucks a month, you could be gaming on Shadow while you're saving up. And then after 10 months, dive into that $600 budget PC. Or if you keep liking that Shadow, man, just keep saving that money. And you might end up with yourself with a 3900X and an RTX 2080. That's a great deal. But guys, I've been testing Shadow for over three months. We've tested the hardware, we've tested the gaming experience. But the big question comes down to, is it right for you? Unfortunately, this isn't the video for that, but we can bring it down into the comments below. We could talk about it and I can even make some more follow-up videos if y'all want that. And of course, if you wanna talk more directly, go hit me up on our Discord. We've got a lot of tech savvy nerds there that just wanna talk nerdy with you and help you out with all your tech problems. And then of course, hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna be having a lot more tech content I've got a 10th gen processor on the way, Ryzen 4000 whenever that hits, as well as RTX 3000 is gonna come my way. So thank you guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon too so you know when those videos launch, and see you later Turk Force, let's go get to work.